Hi everyone, um, my name's Adrian. I've got a channel here on YouTube that is um, a knitting channel. And for my subscribers, this video is a little off brand, definitely off brand. Uh, I wanted to talk about the YouTube partner program changes that were made today. YouTube um, made an announcement and sent out some emails to discuss some changes that were being made to advertising and the way that people who create YouTube content can earn money from these videos. This, uh, it actually affects everybody. So people who watch YouTube channels and don't necessarily have one themselves, it's, it's going to affect you as well. Um, I wanted to get this video out pretty quickly without any editing or anything like that. And <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night when I probably should be asleep, uh, because I've been really concerned by the sorts of things that I've been hearing and seeing and people that have already deleted their YouTube accounts as a result of this, which is pretty drastic, um, in my opinion. So the changes they made um, will be in effect from February 20. And basically what you'll need now to be able to monetize or allow YouTube to put an advertisement and earn money off a video is that you'll have to have a thousand subscribers and you'll have to have 4,000 hours of viewing time in the last 365 days, which equates to 240,000 minutes of viewing time. Um, for those of you who are rushing to your analytics, remember that YouTube measures viewing time in minutes and not really hours. Uh, a lot of people have been really upset about this, saying that YouTube is trying to stamp out smaller channels. Um, this won't affect me personally. Um, as I sort of meet those two metrics at this point in time, things can change with the viewing time, of course, and I guess you can lose subscribers as well. But a lot of people are saying that this is squashing out smaller YouTubers and uh, allowing YouTube to just sort of live off the higher incomes of the bigger YouTubers. Um, this had me really concerned. I was over on Twitter reading for a lot of today and it was kind of blowing up about all of this. And the first person that I saw that was tweeting about this was John Prosser, who is a YouTuber tech reviewer who I follow. Um, you can check out his stuff is really good things. Uh, and he, I shared the same sentiments that he was displaying or that he was putting out there on Twitter. And that my immediate reaction was, this is, this is a good thing. Now hear me out. <laughs> Cause I know that probably going to be some smaller YouTubers who will get demonetized and won't be able to earn money off these thinking, how is this a good thing? The other conversation that was going around was that this was in response to Logan Paul's video. Uh, and I think unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard something about the video that he uploaded recently. Um, and that YouTube needed to come up with some stricter guidelines for how people earn money and what their content is. The response to that, you know, will demonetize the smaller channels seems counterintuitive. But the one thing I noticed after Logan Paul removed his video from YouTube on the trending page, there were so many just completely unknown channels with practically no subscribers that were re-uploading this video and getting millions of views off it because it was the topic of the day and everyone wanted to see what was going on. And I think that that made things a lot worse because people were monetizing those videos and it was all happening so quickly that you know, I mean, YouTube processes 4 billion videos a day or people watch 4 billion videos a day. It's really high volume and it's kind of impossible for YouTube to manually review things and say, this content is acceptable for advertising uh, as it goes out manually. It's not possible. So I think that these smaller channels that were trying to capitalize off the, the, uh, the story were monetizing and advertisers were just pulling their ads left, right and center. Um, and I think that it's a, it's emblematic of what YouTube has become. People get on YouTube these days to make money, to become famous. Uh, I read recently there was some sort of poll that was done with school children and a lot of them responded that when they grew up, they wanted to be YouTubers and don't get me wrong. YouTube is a great platform and I love making content. I think a lot of people love making the content that they make on YouTube and it's the second largest search engine in the world. We're all using YouTube and we're all using it every day. 
So I think it is a great platform, but I think for it to get this image that it's a kind of place that you come to to make money, to get famous, so that you don't have to do other things for money is a little fallacious and it's a very misleading thing because it's a very, very small percentage of people on YouTube who can make that kind of money and who can get that kind of notoriety. And I think the drive to reach that has compromised the integrity of the content over many years. Um, I've been watching YouTube. I have been you know, a creator and a partner only for a year or two. But I think you would be hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't think that the, quanti the quality and the quantity of content has changed over the years. So I think it's a great move on YouTube's behalf to make these changes because as a smaller YouTuber, you know, we get into this because we love to make the videos that we're making. We like to create a little network of, of subscribers and people that view regularly and we love to interact with people, share our knowledge or share our experience or just plain entertain people. And that's what makes YouTube great and it's what made YouTube great in the early days people with passion making content because they loved it. And I think that's what YouTube is trying to create again with this barrier at the beginning. Once you've achieved a thousand viewers, uh, subscribers and 4,000 hours of viewing time, then you can monetize or allow YouTube to advertise on your videos and earn a small stipend from that. I've been on YouTube, as I say, for a couple of years as a as a partner, as a creator, and I think I've earned just under $300. You know, it's not, it's not great income. It's something and it's, it's excellent. And I love the fact that I can earn money from making the content that I do. It is not the primary reason why I make this content. And if YouTube was to demonetize my account, it wouldn't stop me from making videos. Um, I recently took a little bit of a break, a little bit, it's been about six months, from creating content and I've spent a little bit of time planning some uh, new episodes and updating my set, I guess, um, because I love doing it. I stopped because the passion kind of went away for a little while and now I'm coming back. So as I say to my subscribers, um, I will be back with more relevant content for you but I was just really concerned about what I'd been reading on Twitter. A lot of people have been very angry with YouTube for making these changes. Uh, it is a business like any other, it needs to make revenue. I understand it's owned by Google and Google has a lot of revenue anyway, but now that YouTube has these large creators that they are making quite a bit of money from, they can afford to make these changes on the lower end of the scale. It's not to squash you out, it's essentially a selective process to say, we are only looking for the creators who are passionate about what they're doing, who are doing it for what we consider the right reasons, and that is just simply to create good content and connect with a larger audience. If you prove yourself, if you grow your channel, if you create quality content, then we will monetize. A lot of people have been talking on Twitter about discoverability and that smaller channels will have absolutely no chance now of getting the subscribers and the 4,000 hours of viewing a year because they won't be discoverable because of YouTube's algorithms. Uh, it's pretty transparent, the algorithm, as far as algorithms and proprietary algorithms can be, in that YouTube will sort of lay out how the algorithm works to a degree. And one of the things I've found from YouTube's information is that it isn't so much monetization or even views, the number of views that will get you greater discoverability, but it is the view time for your videos. So the, longest peop the longer people are hanging around and watching your videos, the more discoverable they become. People have uh, a very short attention span that I think is probably getting shorter, and I don't quite know this metric, but the uh, YouTube information was that people's attention span, or their, I guess their deciding time is about eight seconds for a video, whether they're going to continue and invest their time to watch the rest of the video, or whether they bail out and go somewhere else. If you make it past a couple of minutes, it's fairly good retention, uh, depending on the size of your video, the length of your video. But what they're looking for is creators that will make content that people can engage with for a larger percentage of the time. And this is what helps bump discoverability right up. 
There are some other things as well, such as you know the metadata that you have and the uh, search engine optimization that you have with your videos. So using keywords, using titles that are relevant and not misleading and using description box information that reflects the keywords and the content of the video will also help bolster up discoverability. So I just want people to understand that it isn't about whether or not you earn revenue for YouTube that bumps you higher up in the listings. Now, if we're talking the trending page, and I've, I've seen this come up a few times today, people will say that they'll have no chance of making the trending page. And my response to that is that the majority of huge YouTubers out there don't ever make the trending page. You know, PewDiePie is an exception and he's frequently seen on the trending page. But so many of you follow um, bigger YouTubers like Graveyard Girl, and I don't think I've ever seen her on the trending page, even though she gets millions of views. It's not about views and it isn't about the revenue. The trending page is about those viral videos that explode quickly. Um, you know, and that has a totally separate kind of algorithm that it works by. But when we're talking general discoverability, I've talked about the ways that you can make your video a little bit more discoverable. So I guess with all of this rambling and those of you who watch me regularly, uh, regularly realize how much editing I do to sound coherent and not a rambling mess like I am now, um, you'll, you'll realize that this isn't, this isn't the end of the world. Sure, it's a bit of a shame that the money that you have been earning from your videos will be gone now for a while until you build the audience up. Um, but I don't think anybody who has less than a thousand subscribers is living off their YouTube income anyway. Yes, it's a good supplementation to your income if you have one. Um, I realize that there are some young YouTubers, school-aged kids, who maybe don't have jobs and don't get money other than YouTube. But you have to consider what YouTube is giving you. You have a platform to reach billions of people every day. They give you um, tools to help edit and refine your videos. And in, in, res in return for that, you may get some money. And that's such a cherry on top of the Sunday. The fact that that's gone now or will be gone from the 20th of February doesn't mean that YouTube doesn't value you as creators. And coming from a small YouTuber myself, we, I value small YouTubers. So I don't want anybody to think that their content isn't valued. I think this is an effort to bring YouTube back to what it was in the earlier days with quality content driven by passionate people. Um, I think that's pretty much all I want to say about that. Uh, I normally have some editing to help me end things off nice and smoothly, but that's what I wanted to let you guys know. And if you have a different opinion, and I'm sure there's a few of you that do, leave it in the comments below. We can continue this conversation uh, here or over on Twitter or Instagram. There'll be some information down below. And if you're interested in knitting, if you're a knitter or if you're thinking about knitting, consider subscribing to my channel. Check out some of the content that I've got here. Uh, I will be coming back with some fresh new stuff in the next couple of weeks. I've been racking my brains on how to improve the quality of my content uh, and you know, reach a wider audience and um, make things that you wanna see. So anyway, <laughs> uh, all the information's down below. Please keep talking about this issue. Uh, YouTube obviously does see some of this and um, hang in there, don't lose hope yet. I, I'd say if you're, if you're in it for the wrong reasons, you're probably going to get out as a result of this announcement. But if you truly are passionate about creating a small YouTube channel and watching it grow and creating your own unique community to um, hang out with and talk and talk to, then stick around. YouTube is a great platform for that. And I know we're going to see big things from you. All right. That's it from me now. Everyone have a great day and keep on creating. Bye.